Hi everyone, welcome to science. Today we're going to be starting a brand new unit called Matter and Energy in Ecosystems. My name is Miss Catherine and I am a teacher here in Denver, Colorado. I am really honored to be your guide throughout this unit as I know your teachers back at home really miss seeing you in their classrooms every day. Let's go ahead and get started with lesson 1.2. For this lesson today, you are going to need a pen or a pencil and some lined or blank paper to write with. Or you can just follow along with Amplify Online if you have a computer and internet access. Go ahead and pause the video at this time and gather some of those materials. Additionally, today, if you have a family member or a friend on video chat that you can talk to and share ideas with, that would be great. Otherwise, you can just talk to me. If you are able to follow along with Amplify Online, here is your click path to get to today's lesson. We are in Matter and Energy and Ecosystems, Chapter 1, Lesson 1.2. If you are following along on paper, go ahead and title your page for today with our unit and our lesson so that we can stay nice and organized the way that scientists do. Again, pause the video if you need time to do that. To start off today in a lesson called Investigating a Biodome, hmm, I wonder what that is, we're going to watch a video to give us some context for our new unit. As we watch, I want you to think about what problem will we be or could we be using our knowledge of science or our practices of science to try to solve here in this new unit. Here we go. Biosphere 2 was built between 1987 and 1991. And the goal was to see if eight people could live inside a closed system where they would grow their own food, rebreathe the same air over and over again, and reuse and recycle the same water over and over again. And their hope was that everything they learned by doing this, this closed system experimentation, would allow us to someday live elsewhere in the solar system. I'm Linda Lay, and I was one of the original crew members in Biosphere 2. Biosphere 2 was designed to be completely separate, which means the atmosphere has to be sealed off from the outside atmosphere. Every little seam had to be tested to make sure it wasn't leaking. We grew almost all of our own food inside of the biosphere, and of course we had to cook. For our farm, we had plants and animals, lots of different kinds of plants. We started out with three different kinds of animals. Chickens, and we got eggs from the chickens. We had one egg a week per person. We had goats, so we got a little bit of goat milk from the goats and a little bit of goat meat. Biosphere 2 contains five unique biomes or plant communities, including the tropical rainforest, the savanna, tropical ocean, mangrove marsh, and the coastal fog desert. Well, all eight of us had our own job, and my job was to make sure that the rainforest, the savanna, and the desert were functioning. Um, what I mean, the plants were growing, the animals were happy, the temperatures were correct, to see if these were really good choices for a biosphere that someday might be off of the face of the planet. The eight people living inside faced many challenges. Among these were 14-hour workdays and producing barely enough farm crops to sustain themselves. They had very little food. The agriculture was also challenging because we weren't really growing quite enough food to give us all the calories we needed to do all the work we needed to do. And sometimes you could really feel that you were at the end of your calories. You couldn't work anymore because you'd used up all of the food that you were, you were eating. We built Biosphere 2 to be closed to the outside atmosphere for 100 years. So when we closed the door in 1991, we expected to have it closed and separate from the Earth's atmosphere for 100 years. The people would come out after two years, which we did, but we expected to have it closed, and that would be a very beautiful long-term experiment. In fact, it didn't go on that long. A lot of different difficulties um, cropped up, both inside the biosphere itself but also with funding and with other things that happened on the outside. 
One of the main outcomes of the closed mission era of the early 1990s was that people found just how hard it is to replicate Earth under glass. All of the things we take for granted that the Earth does, clean air, clean water, plants that grow naturally, was vastly harder for people to design and achieve in a closed system. You can't really fail as long as you learn something from the experiment and as long as you learn something from the questions you have. If you just stop, maybe you could call that a failure because you didn't follow up on the system. But in Biosphere 2, we sure learned a lot. take a minute and reflect on what we just were introduced to with this whole biodome. So in a moment, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and answer the following two questions. What is one thing you found interesting about this biosphere experiment? And what questions do you have about living in a biosphere? If you're following along on paper, you can go ahead and just answer these two questions right there on your sheet. If you're following along with me here on Amplify, let me remind you how to get to where I'm at. So seventh grade, matter and energy and ecosystems, chapter one, lesson 1.2, and I'm right here in the warm up. So again, at this time, go ahead and pause the video, have a chance to think about and record your ideas about these two questions. Great, so we just investigated uh, a little bit about this idea of a bio, a biodome. And we watched a video about how this biosphere experiment way back in 1990 was a closed ecosystem built by humans to try to mimic what life here on Earth was like. Because maybe someday we could do this on a different planet. How crazy would that be? So here is our task for this unit. Go ahead and pause the video and let's read our email here from Dr. Brian Corey to us, our student ecologists. Along with this email, Dr. Corey sent us some additional information about our mission. So let's check it out. So Dr. Corey said that five years ago, a local group called the Econauts began an ambitious project to determine if humans could survive on another planet, much like those scientists in the video. They constructed a biodome, which is an ecosystem inside a glass dome larger than a football field. The ecosystem was filled with plants, animals, and volunteer group of eight humans. Would you sign up for that? But there was a problem. For the first few years, the plants and animals inside the biodome seemed healthy and normal. In the last few years, however, the Econauts began to notice some problems. Animals were getting sick and failing to reproduce. Plants weren't growing as big or producing as much fruit as they once did. The Econauts realized that something had gone wrong. Although the organisms were safely removed from the biodome, the cause of these problems is still a mystery. So here's your mission. The Econauts want to build another biodome, but first they need to understand what went wrong with this one. Much like the scientists in the video, these Econauts had trouble getting enough energy storage molecules. So the scientists in the video said you could feel your calories, for example, waning on you, not getting enough of the food you needed. So we're gonna start off by thinking about, well, why did the biodome fail? And why didn't the plants and the animals in the biodome have enough of, enough of these energy storing molecules? These things that can give them energy, like calories, so they have enough of what they need to do for their job. So again, we're going to think here first about why didn't the plants and the animals in the biodome have enough energy storage molecules? And what I mean by an energy
energy storage molecule is a molecule that organisms or living things can use to release the energy that they need to survive. Because again, in the video, the scientists mentioned being tired, not having enough energy released so that they could do their jobs and survive. And we just heard a little bit ago that our plants weren't growing big and our animals were getting sick in our Econauts biodome experiment that they tried. So now we're going to examine some of the Econauts files about the biodome because any good scientist like yourself keeps track of all of their discoveries. If you have access to Amplify, go ahead and click your tab over to where it says Activity 2, Reading, Examining the Biodome Files. If you don't have access to Amplify, again, that's fine. In a minute, I'll go through some of the important things around those readings. Here would be a great time to pause the video and review the Biodome Files if you have access to Amplify Online. And as you read, I want you to look for information and make some annotations and highlights and margin notes that might help you figure out the answer to this question of why our plants and our animals in the biodome didn't have enough of these energy storage molecules. If you don't have access to Amplify Online, I'm going to go ahead on my screen and investigate these biodome files. But remember, as I'm showing you things on my screen, I want you to be writing things down on your paper around this chapter one question. All right, so here we go. File one, news stories. Hmm, I wonder what that's about, news stories. Group builds an ecosystem from scratch. Okay, let's check this out. Biodome is a large glass dome with a human-made ecosystem inside. Make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so hmm, looks like these are space fans, but their very own ecosystem. Dome's completely enclosed. Members of the group live sealed inside for several years. Again, to see if we could live like this on the moon or on the planets. Oh, this is interesting. The members of the Econauts are not astronauts or scientists. They're just space fans. Hmm. What if they watch a lot of Star Trek? Other organizations have attempted to build biodomes in the past with little long-term success. Hmm. They're only eating food farmed and raised in the biodome. Wow, that must be a lot of work. Oh, biodome fails. Ecologists determine why. Ooh. Oh, here's a map. So the failed biodome included an ocean, an area of land, a rainforest, farm. Hmm. Again, they notice that decrease in the populations of their organisms. Interesting. Remember, as I'm showing you the readings, you're thinking about that chapter one question. Bio two, Econaut biographies and job assignments. Hmm. Oh, so they've been assigned a specific job, just like she said in the video. Oh, here they are. Oh, why did they include an ecologist? Ecologist understands how ecosystems work. We heard from an ecologist in the video. Their team doesn't seem to have one. Hmm. Let's go to the next article. File three, list of recommended organisms to include. Well, that seems like that would be really important. Oh, 
Some of them seem to be crossed off. Ooh, spiders. I would not want spiders. Scorpions, yeah, no thank you. Peanuts, maybe someone had an allergy. There's some notes. So I wonder why they decided to not include worms. Where were worms? Oh, there. And bacteria need worms to break dead matter into smaller pieces so bacteria can feed on it. Hmm. Maybe they had something else. It's a good thing that they included producers for both land and water ecosystems. Hmm. Oh, producers, here we go. So they have things from land like bananas, things from water like Elodea, an aquatic plant, some algae. Hmm. These are examples of really good annotations for the next time that you're reading on your own. Let's see what else is here. File four, biodome water system design. Well, I guess a water system would be pretty important, don't you think? So it looks like the water system in the biodome was well designed. Hmm. Let's see if we agree. Why do you think this water does, uh, system is designed well? That's a good idea. All right, file four, let's see. What was the name of this one? Someone's journal. Oh, the goat herd's journal. I don't really want to read someone's journal, so we'll just pause there for now. Remember, here's what you were thinking about. What information in those files as we skimmed them might be helpful to think about this chapter question. Go ahead and pause the video, write down your ideas, or better yet, share them with a friend nearby, on video chat of course, or a family member. As we've been thinking about these biodomes, we've been using this term ecosystem a lot because a biodome is a human-made ecosystem. So I wanted to pause for a moment and make sure we're on the same page about what this term ecosystem means. So an ecosystem is all of the living and the non-living things that interact in a particular area. And this word is so important that I think now would be a really great time to pause the video and record this definition on your sheet so that you can reference it later. We're talking specifically in this unit about an ecosystem, but I want you to remember that an ecosystem is only one kind of system that scientists study. A system in general is just a set of interacting parts forming a complex whole. So as we think about an ecosystem here in this unit, for why did this ecosystem in the biodome of the Econauts fail, we're gonna be thinking about how all of these interacting parts, the living and the non-living things, work together in a complex whole. So I want you to pause for a moment and look back at your ideas to the chapter question, those things that you were writing down as you were examining the biodome files. And I want you to think about, well, were my ideas about why the biodome might have failed and why the plants and the animals didn't have enough of those energy storage molecules, was it because of a part of the ecosystem that is living or non-living? And scientists like to use the terms biotic and abiotic to describe those living and those non-living parts of an ecosystem. So go ahead and go back and label if you have on paper your ideas or your annotations that were biotic in nature or abiotic in nature. Or if you were annotating online in Amplify, go ahead and pause the video and do the same thing with your digital annotations. Again, labeling your ideas in the biodome files as being a part of a biotic or an abiotic, a living or a non-living part of the ecosystem, as maybe those are one of the reasons why those plants, those animals, didn't have enough energy storing molecules.
Great. So one thing I was thinking about as I was reflecting on the chapter one question is, well, where do those energy storage molecules come from in the first place? So they didn't have enough, but where do you get them? So we're going to turn in Amplify to our simulation because molecules are things that are so tiny I can't see them. And we need to use some technology to help us make visible what is invisible to our eyes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to explore the sim here in this matter and energy and ecosystems unit. And as we do that, we're going to consider these questions. What do you notice about changes that you can make in the sim? Where do these energy storage molecules first appear? And what ideas do you have about where energy storage molecules in an ecosystem come from in the first place? If you have access to Amplify Online, now would be a great time to pause the video and explore the sim on your own. If you don't have access to Amplify Online, let's do it together. So if you don't know, when you get into Amplify, there's this nifty little shortcut over here to just jump right to a sim so you don't need to deal with all the clicking. So here's where I want to be, energy and ecosystems sim. And this one for me takes a minute to load and know I'm not using an iPad. Again, if you're on your computer, this one might take a minute to load as well. While that's happening, let's remind ourselves what we're thinking about. What do we notice about the sim? Where do energy storage molecules first appear? And then what ideas do you have about where energy storage molecules come from? Okay. Carbon dioxide. Oh, I can change that. Oh, sunlight. I'm going to change it to high because we have a lot of sunlight here in Colorado. Oh, there's that producers. Okay, let's just play. So again, we're thinking about what do I notice? Where do energy storage molecules first appear? What are my ideas about where they come from? Oh, here, energy storage molecules, this little orange thing with black dots. How are they moving? Where are they going? Where are they coming from? Well, I'm noticing a lot are moving out of this thing called a producer, not really into it. It's kind of going into these consumers, going into the dead matter. It's little triangles, carbon dioxide, thing called carbon. What does this do? Trap. Oh. Oh, there's that abiotic matter term again, talking about our things up here. Undo. Oh, and there's our biotic term again, talking about these pieces that are living. Oh, look, and there's even some pictures. So we got like mushrooms here on decomposers, secondary consumers, I have snake, maybe that's a fox. Consumers, I got a bunny rabbit, maybe a mouse. Producers, looks like some flowers, some plants. Oh, I can kill things. Hmm. I know how some of us like to do that in The Sims, especially with that metabolism one, if you remember that from last year. Hmm. Okay, well, we're just kind of playing around. So I'm gonna pause this and remind ourselves of our questions. Again, if you have someone near you that you can talk to, go ahead and share some of your ideas about these three questions. Otherwise, go ahead and just write them on your paper. So now that we had a time uh, or a chance, I should say, to interact with the sim, let's reflect on our question. Let's give ourselves a little bit more of a purpose for what we were looking for in the sim besides just some initial ideas and playing around. 
we are trying to look at where do the energy storage molecules come from. So right now I want you to go ahead and pause the video and complete this chart with evidence from the sim to record where these molecules are found. So if you're working on paper, go ahead and set up a chart that looks like this. Those parts of an ecosystem, producers, consumers, decomposers, dead matter, abiotic matter. And then do they have energy storage molecules? Do they have those molecules flowing in or flowing out? And if you are following along in Amplify, we are now just in section three, activity three. And you will see if I hit next, part two, there we go. That chart is there for you. And there's mine that's filled out. Awesome, so let me go back. And again, if you didn't see what my ideas were, go ahead and pause that video and record yours. Well, since I made a classic teacher move and forgot to delete my key, here is my ideas. Things that I noticed in the sim is that all the different types of living things, whether it was something that died or was a mushroom or a plant or an animal, they all contained those energy storage molecules. But the abiotic matter up there at the top where the air was didn't really have any. As far as energy storage molecules flowing in, was really just the consumers, those like animals, the decomposers, those mushrooms and the dead stuff. They were the only ones that had energy molecules flowing in. The producers didn't seem to, but yet they all had them flowing out. So as we wrap up lesson 1.2, before we see each other again for lesson 1.3, I want you to take some time and share some of the evidence that you gathered today, your ideas about our investigation question with a family member or friend, and what this information might mean for our unit problem around why the Econauts Biodome failed. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope to see you next time.